بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میرا نام ڈاکٹر سلیم احمد ہے اور میں آپ کو اس سیمسٹر میں کورس بزنس میتھمیٹکس ٹو پڑھاؤں گا میں اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر ہوں ڈپارٹمنٹ آف میتھمیٹکس میں کام سرچ انفارمیشن ٹیکنالوجی اسلام آباد کیمپس میں میں نے 2011 میں کام سرچ جوائن کیا تھا اور تب سے اب تک میں اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر کے طور پر کام کر رہا ہوں میں نے پی ایچ ڈی کی ہے اپلائڈ میتھمیٹکس میں فرام اسٹیٹ یونیورسٹی آف نیو یارک یو ایس اے اس سے پہلے میں نے ایم ایس سی اور ایم فل قائد یونیورسٹی اسلام آباد سے کیا اس کے بعد میں پی ایچ ڈی کے لیے چلا گیا یو ایس اے اور واپس آ کے میں نے کام سرچ جوائن کر لیا کچھ کورس کے بارے میں انٹروڈکشن بک ہم وہی یوز کریں گے کیونکہ یہ کورس کانٹینیویشن ہے بزنس میتھمیٹکس ون کا تو ہم وہی بک فالو کریں گے جہاں سے آپ نے اسٹاپ کیا تھا بزنس میتھمیٹکس ون کو ہم وہیں سے اس کو اسٹارٹ لیں گے اپلائڈ میتھمیٹکس فار بزنس اکنامکس اینڈ سوشل سائنسز فورتھ ایڈیشن بائی فرینک ایس بڈنک تو یہی بک ہے اس کے علاوہ اگر آپ ایڈیشنل ریڈنگ کے طور پہ کوئی بک پڑھنا چاہیں تو انٹروڈکٹری میتھمیٹیکل انالیسس فار بزنس اکنامکس اینڈ دا لائف اینڈ سوشل سائنسز ہے یہ بھی وہی بک ہے جو آپ کے انسٹرکٹر کورس ون میں جو آپ کو ریکمینڈ کی تھی یہ وہی سیم بکس ہیں دونوں اگر آپ کے پاس موجود ہیں تو آپ انہیں سے ریڈنگ جاری رکھیں میں اس ٹیکسٹ بک کو کلوزلی فالو کروں گا اگر آپ کے پاس یہ بک ہے تو آپ دیکھیں گے کہ میرے لیکچر نوٹس بھی اسی بک میں سے ہیں اور میں ایکسرسائزز وغیرہ بھی اسی بک میں سے موسٹلی اسائن کرتا رہوں گا گریڈنگ پروسیجر یہ بھی سیم ہے جیسے کہ بزنس میتھمیٹکس ون میں تھا یہ تین کریڈٹ آور کا کورس ہے زیرو کریڈٹ آور کی لیب تو کوئی لیب نہیں ہے اس میں ٹوٹل پوائنٹس ہنڈریڈ ہیں سیشنل ون اور ٹو ٹوینٹی فائیو پوائنٹس کا جی ڈی بیس فائیو پوائنٹس کے ہیں ایٹ لیسٹ فور کوزز دیے جائیں گے جو ایم سی کیو ٹائپ ہوں گے ٹین پوائنٹس کانسٹیٹیوٹ کریں گے وہ اسائنمنٹس بھی ایٹ لیسٹ فور ہوں گی اور وہ بھی ٹین پوائنٹس کانسٹیٹیوٹ کریں گے ہم آپ کو ایم سی کیو کوزز اور اسائنمنٹس ٹائم ٹو ٹائم دیتے رہیں گے فائنل ایگزام ففٹی پوائنٹس کا اور یہ کمیلیٹیو ایگزام ہوگا جو بھی پورا کورس ہم پڑھیں گے اس میں سے یہ فائنل ایگزام ہوگا اور ہاف جو ہے اس کی ویٹیج ہے ففٹی پوائنٹس کی کورس ابجیکٹیو اس میں یہ ہے کہ جب آپ یہ کورس پڑھ چکیں گے تو یو ول بی ایبل ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ گرافیکل ریپرزنٹیشن اینڈ سولوشن آف لینئر پروگرامنگ پرابلم لینئر پروگرامنگ ہمارا پہلا ٹاپک ہے تو یہاں سے ہم اسٹارٹ لیں گے یہ ٹینتھ چیپٹر ہے آپ نے نائن چیپٹرس پڑھ رکھے ہیں بزنس میتھمیٹکس ون میں سو دس از دا ٹینتھ چیپٹر آف دا بک اس کے بعد آپ نے تھرٹین اور فورٹین چیپٹر بھی پڑھا ہے تو وہ ہم اسکپ کر کے آگے نکل جائیں گے اس کے بعد ڈفرنسیشن ہے لمٹس کانسیپٹس ہیں ہائر آرڈر ڈیریویٹیوز ہے آپٹیمائزیشن پرابلمس ہیں انٹیگریشن ہے رولز آف انٹیگریشن اور ان کی اپلیکیشن تو یہ سب کچھ آپ کو آ جائے گا اس کورس کے پڑھنے کے بعد کورس کانسیپٹس اور جنرلائزیشن آف کورس آپ بزنس میجر ہیں تو ڈیفینیٹلی آپ میتھمیٹکس بھی اپنے بزنس کے پرابلمس کو حل کرنے کے لیے پڑھ رہے ہیں تو یو ول بی ایبل ٹو یوز میتھمیٹکس ٹو سالو یور بزنس پرابلمس پرابلمس انوالونگ ہول نمبرز جیسیمل فریکشن پرسینٹس یہ سب چیزیں اس میں ہوں گی الجبرائک آپریشن یہ آپ نے فسٹ میں بھی پڑھے ہیں اسی طرح کی ہم چیزوں کو جاری رکھیں گے analyze and interpret data using common statistical procedures uh, use mathematical procedures to analyze and solve business problems so, this is the most important thing here in business mathematics 2 mein, mathematical procedures jo hai, analyze and solve for your business problems so as many of your business problems we will try to in our examples and exercises that as many business problems we solve kar sake, hum kare, hai, as an example so I hope it will be a good experience um, to have this course with me and I hope we both will enjoy this course. You as students, I, I as instructor. Um, your course outlines hain, uh, topic wise, I will go through it. You can see in Bednik's book, mein bhi, chapter 10, ke baad, ye sari listed hain wahan pe. linear programming, graphical method, simplex method, uh, special phenomenon, computer solution methods, dual problem, transportation and assignment models, solution to transportation and assignment models and their method of solution how to solve these uh, models and problems uske baad hum calculus ki taraf chale jayenge abhi tak aapne calculus nahi dekhi uh, apne pure applied mathematics ke course mein to limits average rate of change differentiation additional rules of differentiation op- optimization یہ اپلیکیشنز میں آ جاتا ہے ڈفرینسیشن کی لیکن یہ سب کیلکولس کے ٹاپکس ہیں آئیڈینٹیفیکیشن آف میکسیما اینڈ مینیما ریونیو کاسٹ اینڈ پروفٹ 
applications integration and techniques of integration definite integral applications of definite integrals um, first order differential equations इसमें सेपरेबल और लीनियर इक्वेशंस हम सिर्फ देखेंगे इट्स अ वेरी ब्रॉड सब्जेक्ट डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन लेकिन इसमें हम थोड़ा सा एसेंस लेंगे डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस का एंड वी विल ओनली डू सेपरेबल वेरिएबल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस एंड द लीनियर इक्वेशंस इसके बाद मैथमेटिकल मॉडलिंग को भी थोड़ा बहुत टच किया जाएगा और वो यूज करेंगे हम इसी फर्स्ट ऑर्डर डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस को टू टू मॉडल सम रियल वर्ल्ड प्रॉब्लम्स फंक्शंस ऑफ सेवरल वेरिएबल एंड पार्शियल डेरिवेटिव्स एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन इज आवर लास्ट लास्ट टॉपिक कंटेंट वाइज जो चैप्टर वाइज कंटेंट्स हैं बडनिक के वो इस तरह से हैं कि चैप्टर टन में हम लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग पढ़ेंगे इंट्रोडक्शन इंट्रोडक्टरी है इसमें तीन सेक्शन है हम थोड़ा बहुत लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग के बारे में बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट्स लेंगे मेथड ऑफ सोल्यूशन है ग्राफिकल मेथड है वो पढ़ेंगे इसके बाद एक सिम्प्लेक्स मैथड है चैप्टर अलेवन में उस, उसको गो थ्रू करेंगे ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एंड असाइनमेंट मॉडल्स हैं चैप्टर ट्वेल्व में उसके बाद थर्टीन फोर्टीन हम स्किप करेंगे क्योंकि वो आप फर्स्ट कोर्स में पढ़ चुके हैं फिर हम कैलकुलस की तरफ चले जाएंगे नेक्स्ट जो सिक्स चैप्टर्स हैं फ्रॉम फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी दे आर कैलकुलस टॉपिक्स डिफ्रेंसिएशन ऑप्टिमाइजेशन ऑप्टिमाइजेशन एप्लीकेशन इंटीग्रल कैलकुलस इंट्रोडक्शन एंड एप्लीकेशन फंक्शन ऑफ सेवरल वेरिएबल तो ये छह चैप्टर हैं कैलकुलस के इसके बाद हम स्टार्ट करते हैं दिस वॉज द बेसिक इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ बिजनेस मैथमेटिक्स टू एन माई सेल्फ तो अब हम लेक्चर वन की तरफ चलते हैं जिसमें हम चैप्टर वन बेसिकली चैप्टर वन ऑफ दिस कोर्स बट दिस इज बेसिकली चैप्टर टेन तो यू कैन कॉल इट चैप्टर टेन एज वेल लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग एंड इंट्रोडक्शन ठीक है इसमें लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग क्या होती है इस चैप्टर के ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या हैं प्रोवाइड एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर एंड एजम्पन्स अंडरलाइंग लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग मॉडल्स सबसे पहले हम बेसिक एजम्पन अंडरस्टैंड करेंगे कि स्ट्रक्चर क्या है लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग मॉडल्स का क्या बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट है लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग है क्या इलिस्ट्रेट द ग्राफिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ लीनियर इन इक्वालिटीज लीनियर इन क्वालिटीज की ग्राफिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन की बहुत ज्यादा एप्लीकेशन है लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग में हम जब लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग प्रॉब्लम को सॉल्व करेंगे वी विल बी यूजिंग ग्राफिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन of linear inequalities so you know what the inequalities are you know what linear inequalities are and i hope you know how to draw the graphs of those linear inequalities if not then at least linear equations if you know how to draw the graphs of linear equations you will be able to uh, draw uh, this graphical representation very easily uh, provide an understanding of graphical solution procedures for linear programming model to so graphical solution procedures bhi hum adopt karenge to solve linear programming models पहले हमने कहा कि ग्राफिकल रिप्रेजेंटेशन है इन इक्वालिटीज़ की उनको यूज करते हुए हम ग्राफिकल सोल्यूशन निकालेंगे लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग मॉडल्स के या लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग प्रॉब्लम्स भी कह सकते हैं आप इसको और फिर एट द एंड गिव एग्जांपल्स ऑफ इट्स एप्लीकेशन के लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग की जो एप्लीकेशन है इनकी एग्जाम्पल्स देंगे उनको कैसे सॉल्व किया जाता है मेन टॉपिक्स जो हैं वो बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट्स हैं लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग के ग्राफिकल सोल्यूशन है एप्लीकेशन ऑफ लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग है एप्लीकेशन इन बिजनेस इंडस्ट्री तो ये वही टॉपिक्स हैं जो हमारे ऑब्जेक्टिव्स थे पिछली स्लाइड में आप देख सकते हैं यही ऑब्जेक्टिव्स हैं और ऑफ कोर्स हम वन बाई वन करके इन ऑब्जेक्टिव को अचीव uh, करने की कोशिश करेंगे सो so, पहला जो टॉपिक है बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग और एल पी आई एम राइटिंग एल पी फॉर लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग तो अब आप कहीं एल पी देखें इस चैप्टर में एटलीस्ट तो वो लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग ही उसका मतलब होगा सो लीनियर प्रोग्रामिंग इज अ मैथमेटिकल ऑप्टिमाइजेशन टेक्निक एंड वॉट इज ऑप्टिमाइजेशन यू मे हैव हर्ड दिस वर्ड बिफोर इफ नॉट देन बाई ऑप्टिमाइजेशन वी मीन अ मैथड और प्रोसीजर विच अटैम्प्ट टू मैक्सीमाइज और मिनिमाइज सम ऑब्जेक्टिव फॉर एग्जाम्पल मैक्सीमाइज प्रॉफिट और मिनिमाइज कॉस्ट जी दीज आर सेंसिबल थिंग्स मैक्सीमाइज प्रॉफिट वी ऑल वॉन्ट टू मैक्सीमाइज अवर प्रॉफिट राइट एंड मिनिमाइज अवर कॉस्ट सो वट एवर अवर ऑब्जेक्टिव इज whether we want to minimize our cost or we want to maximize our profit or whatever it can be revenue we want to maximize our revenue right so these are ob objectives so optimization we meet with the proce the procedure or the method that attempts to maximize or minimize these objectives all right so in any linear programming problem certain decisions need to be made these are represented by decision variables x j x1 x2 x3 these variables are x j all right so x j is a subscript here so uh, x1 x2 x3 these type of variables all right and then the basic st structure of a linear programming problem is either to maximize or minimize the objective function while satisfying a set of constraints 
Objective function, as we uh, mentioned before, they are they can be cost, they can be profit. These are our objective functions because we want to maximize or minimize that function. We call that an objective function, and we may need to satisfy some conditions. Those conditions are called constraints. That we are these are conditioning constraints are there. All right. So objective function is the mathematical representation of overall goal stated as a function of decision variables x j. So again, whatever our goal is, we will state that function. As a function of decision variables x j, all right. Examples are profit levels, total revenue, total cost, pollution levels, market share, etc. These all can be our objective functions. They will be expressed as a function of decision variables x j. The constraint, the conditions on the con so. The decision variables x1, x2, x3, they may need to satisfy some conditions. Those are called constraints. So these will also be stated in terms of xj. xj. So this is again xj. All right. So let me write xj here, comma, are conditions that must be satisfied when determining levels for the decision variables. They can be represented by equations. Or by inequalities, all right. Inequalities means less than or greater than types thing, all right. The term linear. Uh, now again, you see in two slides we have been talking about linear programming, linear programming. So what this term linear means here? So the term linear is due to the fact that all functions and constraints will be linear functions of x j, all right. Uh, linear functions mean uh, the power, the maximum power of the variables will be one, and there will no, there, there won't be any cross product term in it, no x1, x2 multiplication thing. All right, so these all functions and the constraints will be linear. A simple linear programming model is, if I want to write a simple linear programming model, it can be, let's say, maximize z let's say z is our function z is, z can be anything it can be profit it can be revenue it it can it can be cost but you know that no one wants to maximize the cost right so sensibly speaking it should not be a cost function it should be profit or revenue function you see z is a function of x1 and x2 so x1 and x2 are decision variables here all right and then constraints we write that we need to maximize this function subject to subject to conditions and conditions are given as this x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 24 so see this is an inequality which is constraining condition 4x1 and plus 3x2 less than 30 less than equal to no, it's a greater than equal to 30 so let me write it greater greater than equal to 30 all right so this is greater than equal to 30 so this is a model so this is main objective function this one here is main our objective function because we need to maximize or minimize this function I'm writing FTN for function to save some time here and these are constraints all right so these are inequalities constraints because these put conditions on the variables in x1, x2. So these are inequalities here. Alright. These are inequalities. These can be equations as well, but mostly you will see they are these are inequalities. Uh, objective function is a function of two variables. It can be a function of three or more variables as well. But here mostly you will see a function of two variables. X1 and X2 are the CN variables here, and they satisfy two conditions. Those are inequalities called constraints. Alright, so this is a simple linear programming problem. All right, there can be complicated ones, but this is what this one is a simple. Let's see an example, an LP example, a scenario. How can we find this thing? So this is given on page 423 of Budnick. It's a very first example uh, from the book, chapter 10. A firm manufactures two products, A and B, each of which must be processed through two departments, one and two. There are two departments, they will pro process these products. All right? So the given tables, this, this table which uh, I'm showing you on the slide, this summarizes labor hour requirements per unit for each product in each department. All right. Let's say this first column here, this one, 3H per unit. What, mean, what does this mean? Three hours per unit. So department one needs three hours 
to process one unit of product A and it needs two hours for to process one unit of product B. All right. Similarly, department 2 needs 4 hours per unit of product A, 6 hours per unit for product B. And the capacity, the weekly labor capacity of department A is 120 hours. Means it cannot spend more than 120 hours uh, per week. So if you need more than 120 hours, department 1 will not be able to do that. So that's what we mean by capacity. Right? Similarly, department 2 has 260 hours capacity. And the profit that you generate from product A is $5 per unit from both the departments. And for product B, it's $6 per unit, which is the last row here, second and third column. So if x, so if x1 and x2 2 are the number of units produced and sold respectively of product A and B. Then the total profit Z is 5x1 plus 6x2. And where we got this from? You see, $5, 5 is the profit margin from product A. And we are producing x1 units of product A. So 5 times x1 will give you the profit from product A. Similarly, 6 dollars per unit is the profit per unit from for product B. We are producing x2 units for product B. So 6 times x2 will be the profit generated from product B. And total profit will be the sum of these two. So z is equal to 5x1 product A. This is the profit right from product A. Profit from product A. And this is the profit from product B. Alright, so this is the total profit function. And now there will be constraints and why I am saying so. Why there should be constraints? Because department 1 and department 2 has limitations. You see the last column of this table, 120 hours is the capacity. We cannot exceed that. So total number of hours should not exceed. So department 1 needs 3 hours per unit, 3 hours per unit to produce one unit of product A. We are producing x1 units. So 3 times x1 will give you the total number of hours for product A. 2 times x2 will give me the total number of hours we need to process product B. So total number of hours will be 3x1 plus 2x2 and this should not exceed 120 hours. So first constraint should be 3x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 120. And that's in our next slide. You see the restrictions, the constraints in deciding the units produced are given by the inequalities. So let me put the subscripts here. 3x1, number of hours for product A, number of hours for product B should be less than 120 because we are dealing with department 1. And for department 2, we need for department 2 we need 4x1 again if you go back to the table 4x 4 hours we need per unit so x1 units will need 4 times x1 hours 6 hours per unit for b so 6 times x2 will give me the total hours for uh, second unit so as you see here 4x1 plus 6x2 less than or equal to 260 department 2. So these are two restrictions on the constraints. Alright. We also know that x1 and x2 cannot be negative because these are the number of units. Number of units can be at least 0, right? They cannot go negative. x1 equal to minus 1 will be nonsense, right? So they are non-negative numbers. So if they are non-negative, so these are the natural um, conditions on the uh, on the CN variables. So the, total, the general LP model which represents the stated problem which I just stated is to maximize z is equal to 5x1 objective function which we modeled in last slide in previous slide and then the constraints 3x1 plus 2x2 less than 120 4x1 plus 6x2 less than 260 and then non-negative x1 and x2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Right? In this LP problem, the two constraints, the first one is objective function, of course. This one is again objective function, right? Because this is the function we need to maximize. These are called objective. Objective function, F, T, N. And these are constraints. These are all constraints. 1 and 2. 
they are called structural constraints and 3 and 4 are called non-negativity constraints and usually because we deal with the quantities the prices and stuff like that they can go negative all right so naturally in lp problem you you will see these type of constraints that are called non-negativity constraints so inequalities 1 and 2 are called structural constraints because we structured them due to the table given due to the conditions given in our problem while 3 and 4 are non-negativity constraints they are, these are natural because x1 and x2 are quantities they are units of uh, some product they cannot be negative so we have to write them as greater than or equal to 0 for both 3 and 4 equation note that the function z is our objective function that needs to be maximized the first one which I mentioned before objective function is the first one which needs to be maximized or there, there can be a function which needs to be minimized that will be our objective function too all right so these were the basic concepts of the linear programming model so basically linear programming if I go back linear programming is a method or a procedure which attempts to maximize or minimize some objective all right and subject to some constraints so let's move on to our next topic which is graphical solutions all right because we have created a problem you see we have created this problem all right maximize this subject to this condition but how to do that how to maximize an objective function subject to some conditions it may be hard all right so first method is the graphical solution of this linear pro programming model before that when a linear programming model is stated in terms of two decision variables now here is a restriction to use this graphical solution method is that your LP model should be in terms of two decision variables all right if it is more than two it will be very hard all right it can be solved by graphical methods so before discussing the graphical solution method we will discuss the graphical uh, graphics of linear inequalities because you see we, in our model we have inequalities going on the equation one and two in our model are inequalities so we need to understand the graphics of these inequalities first and then we will move on to the graphical solution of the whole linear programming model so let's see graph uh, graphics of linear inequalities how to cope with them what are the graphics of linear inequalities 4x1 plus 3y is less than equal to minus 24 this is a linear inequality because there are two variables x and y both have power 1 there is no cross product term so it's a linear inequality we need to see uh, what portion of the plane represents this inequality so let's see first of all what we will do is we will write the corresponding equation all right the corresponding equation is minus 4x plus 3y is equal to minus 24 right this is an equation so let's see what is the graph of this linear equation if we say this is x and this is y right then minus 4x plus 3y will be this if I plug x is equal to 0 y will be minus 6 so it's minus 6 from here if x is 0 then y will be 28 minus minus 8 negative 8 something like that and if y is 0 x will be 6 plus 6 so it will be somewhere here all right so our equation is this straight line all right so this is our straight line which is in this inequal equality all right this is a straight line this straight line is this all right this equation is this now because our we have inequality these are all points x y that give you equal to 24 the value equal to negative 24 we need to make it less or uh, greater so you can pick so there are two regions one is above this and one is below this here is one region one is above this region this whole is half plane this below is another half plane here so if I 
pick any number let's say this is six zero I can pick seven zero x seven y zero if x is seven y is zero then this is seven times four is negative twenty eight which is definitely less than minus twenty four so it means this point should be in that region so I will ignore this portion and will take this one all right so this whole thing this whole portion is our region for minus four x plus three y less than equal to negative 24 and why I'm ignoring this one because I don't need that it had to only one of the regions will satisfy the inequality as this point seven zero has already satisfied it so I don't need to check that but out of curiosity if you want to do that let's pick a point from this region zero zero is a point here so zero zero if x is zero y is zero then it's zero and zero is not less than 24 zero is bigger than 24 so this point does not satisfy our inequality if one point from a region does not satisfy the whole region will not satisfy the inequality all right I hope you understand this how to represent the uh, regions that satisfy the inequality so this whole region is basically our all the points here are here so what is the procedure now what procedure I adopted let's summarize that I wrote it down here graph the boundary which represents the equation all right I should remove this s graph the boundary which represents the equation second determine the side that satisfies the strict inequality so I have done exactly the same I draw the graph of the this boundary line which is here all right and then I just determine which side satisfy the inequality the lower side satisfy the inequality so I said this is our graphic of the linear inequality all right so these are the basic concepts of graphics of linear inequalities if we have more than one than linear inequalities we will see that as well later on or there is another method because it may be little hard for you to see how I got this one let's say uh, I this is the general form of straight line ax plus by plus c equal to 0 right if you see this is the general form a times x plus b times y equal to c right drawing this line may be a little hard for you and then determining the side which side satisfies the inequality that may be harder as well in comparison to this if we change this inequality let's say we have uh, this inequality given the inequality of the form ax plus by less than or equal to c or greater than or equal to c it can be any of them solve for the slope intercept form and what is slope intercept form slope intercept form is this one we solve for y let's say for instance if this is the inequality what I will do is I'll keep by here right and I will subtract ax on the other side plus b and then divide by b if I divide by b y will be less than equal to or greater than equal to depending on depending on this b so we are not sure whether this is less than or greater than this inequality will remain the same or it may change depending on the sign of b if b is positive inequality will remain the same if b is negative inequality reverse all right less than will become greater than so you will get one of this form so solve for the slope intercept form of the inequality if the inequality has the form this one you see i got both of them less or greater so if this is less than minus a by b x plus c by b then the corresponding half space lies below the boundary line why below because y is less you see here let's say let's say this is y is equal to minus a by b x plus c by b let's say this is equal now you see y is equal to the right hand side here if i go up right y will be greater than and if i go down y will be less than that inequality this inequality all right so if y is less than the right hand side the corresponding half space lies below the boundary line and if y is greater than this minus a by b x plus c by b then we have this region it will lie above all right so this is another procedure to determine which side of the line is our solution all right or is satisfied by the inequalities example is 4x1 
plus 2x2 less than or equal to 60. Let's say we need to solve this one. Now I'm using x1 and x2 because you will see the variables x1 and x2 in your linear programming model. So let's use x1 and x2. Again, x1 is your first variable, should be along horizontal line. This should be x1. x2 is the second one, should be along vertical line, x2. So it's the same as x and y, x1 and x2. Now I need to write the corresponding equation. What is the corresponding equation? It's 4x1 plus 2x2 equal to 60. So let's write this. Um, x2 is equal to 2x2 is equal to minus 4x1 plus 60 right we moved 4x1 to the right side and then x2 will be equal to minus 2x1 plus 30 so this is the equation minus 2 is the slope all right so we are going down all right we start from 30 and 15 so this is the line all right this is the line. This is that line. All right. Now, by using our first method, first method says pick any point from these two spaces and see which one satisfies the inequality. So this is 15. You see, because if x1 is 0, if x1 is 0, x2 is 60. You see from here, if x1 is 0, x2 will be 30. Right. So this one is 30. If x 2 is 0, x1 is 15, because 4, uh, 60 divided by 4 is 15, so this point is 15, all right, this was 30. So now, if you want to pick any point from here, let's say 16, x1, 16, y0. If x1 is 16, then 16 times 4 is 64, this is 0 and this is not less than 20, so this point does not satisfy the inequality, so it means we have this side for our solution all right second method right second method was you can simplify the inequality inequality is 4x1 plus 2x2 is less than or equal to 60 don't make it an equation we are using the other method now so x if you subtract 2x2 less than 60 uh, minus 4x1 right and now divide by 2 because 2 is a positive number so inequality is not changing so minus 2x1 plus 30 so inequality will remain the same because we are dividing by a positive number so inequality will remain the same so you get x2 less than or equal to minus 2x1 plus 30 all right so this is our inequality now if we compare this with the previous slide this is our y basically y is less than minus 2x plus 30 you see from here so we are here first one our x2 is less than or equal to the slope intercept form all right so the corresponding half sp sp uh, space lies below the boundary line and you see this is what we got here right this is our boundary line and below it if i go below this one so this is the region which i mentioned before so from both the methods we are getting the same solution all right so i um, did this example with both the methods and you see from both the methods i'm getting the same result so it's your choice now which one you want to use you can either use the first one or the second one whatever you are comfortable with all right now let's move on to the system of linear inequalities let's say we have more than one inequalities i got two examples here this one and the one before here so two examples have only one inequality in it so it's very simple to draw one equation and determine which side it is but if we need to satisfy more than one inequalities at the same time it may be a little harder but it's not that hard let's see an example in this example this is example 2 in your book but Nick page 429 first equation is 4x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 60 3x1 5x2 less than or equal to 75 all right so these are two inequalities and with them we also have positivity constraints that x1 and x2 both are positive all right so basically there are four inequalities all right x1 positive x2 positive two inequalities and the third third and fourth four inequalities now again if you change this one 
to x2 first of all I will move this minus 4x1 and plus 60 but then I am dividing by 2 so this is 30 so it will remain less than or equal to you can do that on your papers all right and see how I got this one second is x2 again less than or equal to again I'm not changing the sign because it's minus 3 by 5 x1 and plus plus 50 all right because 75 we need to divide by 5 so if I uh, if I'm dividing by 5 it's positive so it will not change the inequality all right minus 3 by 5 and then 75 by 5 which is uh, 15 all right so these are two inequalities I will draw them x1 x2 all right so this is uh, better um, the first one is x1 x2 equal to minus 2 x1 plus 30 so first of all I, I need to draw that so if x1 is 0 x2 is 30 so again I'm here it's 30 all right and if x2 is 0 x1 is 15 if x2 is 0 in the first one x1 is 15 so this is the straight line is exactly the same thing which I had in the previous example this is the same line you can draw a straight line passing through this all right so this line is x2 equal to minus 2 x1 plus 30 all right and then the second one is if x1 is 0 x2 is 15 so I'm here x2 is 15 and if x2 is 0 x1 is 25 so somewhere here so this one is our next line all right so this is our line and this line is x2 equal to minus 3 by 5 x1 plus 50 so I draw two straight lines now you see both have less than or equal to sign less than means we are below this I'm below this line right I'm below this line as well all right but again this is x2 equal to 0 and this line is x1 equal to 0 so I have to be above this x1 is greater than or equal to 0 it means I am on this side x2 is greater than or equal to means I am on this side so the region here is if I need to satisfy all the inequalities I need to pick the common region below this line below this line as well so I cannot move away from these two lines and similarly non-negativity constraints means I need to remain in the first quadrant all right so here this one I got so the region is this this is the shaded region this is the region which I got so this is the solution for all these four inequalities if you pick any point from this region it will satisfy all the inequalities all right because I need to remain below this line below this line as well so if I pick a point from here it is below this line but not below this so it is not satisfying the other inequality if I pick point from here it will satisfy this one but not this one and if I cannot go to second third and fourth quadrant because here either of x1 or x2 will be negative and I don't want that all right so this was an example of solving system of linear inequalities if you got let's say I, I solve four inequalities here if you have five six seven doesn't matter you have to draw and pick the common region the common region of all the inequalities will give you the solution of the system of inequalities another example this example is uh, 3 page 430 from Budnick book which we are following all right if you have book you can see this example on that page now we have 2x1 plus 5x2 less than or equal to 20 2x1 plus 2x2 let me write this whole problem first greater than 24 2x1 plus x2 equal to 10 and then x1 greater than equal to 0 x2 greater than equal to 0 right so these are again non-negativity constraints 
both are positive it means we have to remain in first quadrant right it means everything is in first quadrant if everything is positive we cannot leave this first quadrant all right so basically we need to solve these inequalities in first quadrant now all right so if i draw x1 x2 2x1 plus 5x2 equal to 20 is this line all right the second is 2x1 plus x2 equal to 10 is this line all right and 2x1 plus 2x2 greater than 24 is this line all right so this is now this region this is 2x1 plus 5x2 no this is 2x2 2x1 equal to 24 this line this line is this line is plus 5x2 equal to 20 uh, this line is the third one which is 2x1 plus x2 equal to 10 all right and then of course we are in first quadrant so i'm not moving away from x1 and x2 here right so we are in the first quadrant and now you see uh less than 24 it's a greater than 2x1 plus x2 greater than 24 so we are above this line so one one region is this all right the second is less than 20 so we are below this line less than 20 we are below this line and then the third one is exactly on the line it's not inequality it's equal to 10 you see the third equation is equal to 10 equal to 10 so we are on this line all right so so yeah here uh, if you see there is no overlapping region this region is far away from this region and this line is again not lying in this region so if i need to satisfy all the equations and inequalities here i cannot do that if i pick a point from here this will satisfy only one equality this one all right and it will not satisfy this and this if i pick a point from here it will not satisfy 24 this inequality if i pick a region from here it will satisfy the first one but not the second one and if i pick a line let's say a point on this line then it will satisfy second and third equations but not the uh, first and third equation but not the second one all right so every time we are not able to satisfy all the three inequalities over here so it means there is no solution set no region all right the solution set here which is satisfied by all inequalities is called feasible region all right so there is no feasible so this is our conclusion there is no feasible region because no region satisfy all the inequalities all right so there is no solution set basically no uh, feasible region means no solution set all right no solution set here for the set of inequalities okay so now uh, here we are only solving the linear inequalities we haven't incorporated the objective function yet if you go back and see your linear programming model which is written here we not only have the constraints equation here from 1 to 4 we have an objective function as well we need to maximize that so how to incorporate that objective function in our graphical solution all right so let's we will do that here incorporative objective function so how this will affect our solution feasible solution all right this is our next topic so we, I'm going back to that example which we modeled all right so if you um, see our question was to maximize the very first example that we modeled maximize z is equal to uh, 5x1 plus 6x2 that is the profit from uh, product A and profit from product B and then it was subject to two constraints 
which were coming from department's capacities. The first uh, department one capacity was 3x1. The total number of hours for product A and B should not exceed 120 and total number of hours from department B which was 4x1 plus 6x2 should not exceed 260. All right, so this was our problem which we modeled and again x1 and x2 were positive so we are keeping that in mind too that x1 and x2 are the uh, quantities so quantities have to be positive all right objective function and this one so now if you recall we have drawn these two inequalities and we have solved for the feasible region feasible region is the solution of these two inequalities and you will find a point within that region which will maximize your objective function that's why we call it feasible region for the LP problem so let's draw that uh, one line starts from 60 to 45 it's like this and the other one is from 45 to 60 like this so these are your two lines straight lines the feasible region was this if you remember all right so these are the intersection points here of all these inequalities origin all right so your solution will be one of the points from here and the boundaries included because you see all inequalities say less than or equal to greater than or equal to so it means this is the part of the region this line is a part of the region this line is also the part of the region this line is also the part of the region all right so we got this one now our objective function is this our objective function is 5x1 plus 6x2 it's the profit let's say I fix the profit at some level let's say I want profit to be 120 all right so if 5x1 plus 6x2 is equal to 120 we want to maximize it we don't know whether this is the maximum value or not all right but I'm just trying to fix it let's say it's 120 if it is 120 then what type of line this is if I solve it for x2 this is negative 5 by 6 x1 and plus 120 by 6 which is of course 20 all right so here you are getting the slope of a negative 5 by 6 so you will get this curve somewhere here all right slope is negative is going down here it is so at this line along this line your profit will remain at 120 all right it's not exceeding or below because this is equal to 120 no matter what x1 and x2 you take it will remain 120 so along this line the whole line is in the feasible region all right but it is 120 so if i change this 120 to something else let's say if i change this to 180 i am increasing the profit can i do that now you see no slope is changed this will only affect this number which is the intercept it will not change the slope so the new line is parallel to the old line all right but you are getting some value here parallel to that and here the profit is 180 all right because by changing a constant in a line only translates this whole line the line will translate some units above or below the original line all right so again I am still on the feasible region let's say I make it to something 240 the next they are considering is 240 all right let's say if I do that then I am getting something here this is 240 again a parallel line which is going out of the physical feasible region right I again change this to 240 so the new line is this one this is with the profit 120 this line is with the profit 180 and this new line is with the profit 240 and now you see the whole line 240 line is not in the feasible region so we will ignore these values where the profit is 240 but it is out of our feasible region so I have to stop here I will only concentrate on this part of the line which is inside the feasible region
But again, I can further increase it because I still have something above this. I have still something above this. So I can still move this line upwards. If I continue like that, I'll get a line, I'll get a line that only touches the feasible region at this point and goes away. Alright? So I will find a straight line that touches it here and goes away. This line. I'm looking for this line. Alright? This point is 2030. Alright, and at 2030, if I plug this in here at 2030, uh, x120, x230, so this is 180 plus 100, z is 280. Alright, so the profit for this point here is my z is 280. And now you see, uh, so now if I draw this line, let's not do that here. So now I have z equal to 5x1 plus 6x2 which is equal to 280 because I have taken z to be equal to 280 all right so I will draw this line so let's go to the next slide here yeah, let's draw that yeah so my first equation was this second is that and this is my b and the profit function which i am generating is this straight line all right this is a straight line so objective function is blue all right the straight line passing through this point going away so this is our objective function all right so now you see this objective function intersects the feasible region only at this point and it's it's B bigger than all uh, those lines which we drew before with 140 180 240 uh, they, they give you less profit this gives you the maximum profit within the feasible region why maximum because if i go further away from the origin let's say this line let's say this line if i go further away you see it's not in my feasible region anymore all right so this line this one will give me the maximum profit of z is equal to 280 all right and that occurred at this point which is 2030 so it means my profit z 280 is maximum when i produce 20 units of product a and 30 units of product b if I do that, then I get the maximum profit. So this is the solution to our linear programming model, linear programming problem. All right. So I have maximized it through this graphical approach that we fix the profit first at 140, then increased it to 180, then increased it to 240, and then to two, I increased it to 280, where I am only getting one point here. All right. But if I increase it further, this objective function will move out of the feasible region and this will not be our solution anymore it has to stay in the feasible region all right so that's our solution here if you note that the optimal value the maximum or minimum value we call it the optimal value the optimal value occurred at the corner point of the feasible region and this is not the coincidence it's not the coincidence the optimal value of this LB problem will always occur at the corner point all right so it's very easy to see what is the maximum value just draw the feasible region by drawing the inequalities that we did before in previous examples and pick the corner points of that feasible region when you pick those corner points plug that into your objective function whichever gives you the maximum value for profit that will be your answer all right so you don't have to concentrate on the whole feasible region in previous example my feasible region was something like this I don't have to look at this whole region I will just concentrate on these corner points these four corner points I'll plug these four corner points in my z values 
and see which gives you the biggest value that will be my answer all right so that is called the corner point method all right so that's called the corner point method this is a graphical of course method the corner point method and uh, what is this method let me write it for you first of all the first step here is graphically identify graphically identify the region of feasible solution or the feasible region the same thing the feasible region is also the region of feasible solution of course all right so this is the first step the second step is determine the coordinates of the corner points determine the coordinates of each corner point on the region each corner point of this region as we have seen in the last example we got four corner points for the region you may have three or maybe more than four now because we already know that the maximum value will only occur at the corner points so we will not do that graphical technique we will not draw different lines and see where the profit is maximum or minimum what we do is we will plug in these four corner points into our objective function and we will just compare which gives you the maximum value so substitute the coordinates of corner points into objective function substitute these points or these coordinates of the points in to the objective function into the objective function objective function this is our third step so when you substitute it will give you the z value right and determine z values determine z values and in the fourth step we will only compare these four z values four five whatever if we have three corner points we'll get three z values we'll just compare them up and see which one is the biggest and if I, we are looking for a minimization problem we'll look for the lowest value so an optimal solution occurs at a corner point an optimal solution occurs in a maximization problem at a corner point at a corner point yielding the highest value of the highest value of z of course whatever corner points give you the highest highest value of z that will give you the maximum z that will give you the maximization problem all right the solution of maximization problem and in a minimization problem in a minimization problem the lowest value of course at a corner point at a corner point uh, yielding a lowest value yielding a lowest value of z whatever lowest value you get for z of course your problem is minimum over there all right so that corner point will give you the solution all right so this is the corner point method and let me uh, also give you the page number where it is stated it's given on page 4 35 of the Budnik book.
all right the book which we are following you already have that book so look at page 435 in the box the corner point method is also given all right so let's do an example for this corner point method the corner point method example so in our mixed problem this is example 5 on same page on page 435 you have a corner point uh, again uh, this example so I will use corner point method to find the solution so I'm considering the same uh, problem of maximizing 3x1 plus 6x2 this is the problem which we considered at the beginning we actually modeled this problem all right 3x1 number of hours and this this is the profit 3x1 plus 6x2 the profit from product a and b and then subject to two inequalities uh, the inequality this was our profit function inequalities were two um, let's see let's go back and see what were our inequalities for that problem uh, 3x1 plus 2x2 less than 120 3x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 120 and 4x1 plus 6x2 less than or equal to 60 so th these are from department a and b department 1 and 2 department 1 co has capacity of 120 hours 2 had the capacity of 260 hours so our total number of hours should be less than 120 and 260 so these are the inequalities and again we have made the feasible solution over there uh, one of them was this one was this straight line this was the other straight line right so this was our corner point corner point corner point corner point this corner point was 20 30 this corner point was uh, 0 15 I guess it's, it was 45 this is uh, out of bound this is I guess x1 is 0, 60 0 and this point is 0 0 so these are four corner points here in uh, of this feasible region we will just plug these four corner points in in our z function so they have made the table so if you look at that uh, table so if you pick a point uh, 0 0 your z will be zero of course if you pick a point uh, 2030 your z was 280 if you pick the other point 045 it was z is equal to 260 if you pick uh, 60 zero it's i think 40 not 60 this is 40 if you pick 40 zero this gives you z is equal to 200 and now you see you got four values at four corner points as we already know that the maximum value or the minimum value will occur at a corner point so we got all the values of our profit at the corner points now the maximum is this one 280 this one is the maximum so this is our maximum value all right so z is maximum the profit is maximum at 2030 so this is our solution if x1 is 20 x2 is 30 i'll get the maximum profit and what is that profit and the maximum profit is and the maximum profit is 280 all right so this is our maximum profit and this is uh, achieved when x1 is 20 when we produce 20 units of product a and 30 units of product b then i'll get them so this is the same solution if we compare this with our old example uh, let's go back here right we use the graphical method here by incorporating objective function and we saw that our solution was 280 here you see 280 and the same points 30 and 20 all right so by corner point method i got the same thing which is 2030 the point x1 and x2 and 280 is our maximum profit all right so this uh, constitute the section 10.2 of this chapter so we have learned how to use graphical method to solve the linear programming model all right so let's now review what we did so far in today's lecture uh, we 
went through basic concepts of linear programming what linear programming is what optimization is what do we mean by maximize maximizing or minimizing a function what we mean by objective functions what are constraints the whole linear programming model and then we went through the graphical solution of inequalities that how to solve inequalities whenever you solve inequality you don't get points you get the whole region all right so we saw how to get the, uh, those regions for system of inequalities as well and then we use that graphical solutions of inequalities the feasible regions to determine the maximum or minimum value of our objective function so basically we solved our linear programming model by using graphical solution method all right so we covered basically section 10.1 and 10.2 of this chapter we will continue with this chapter next time we'll continue with section 10.2 and 10.3 and we'll try to wrap up this chapter and that is it for today thank you